The first is that we're crossing into extremely out there examples, like okay. parking a gigantic oh bus in front of a car. <laughs> no, and, it's not it, extremely. And, 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 yeah, people next have to a campers, with and cats. they put campers, and, and they just have them everywhere. Wait, what were you talking about again? I forgot. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Forgettable, the show that will make you forget where you are, what you're doing, and why you started listening in the first place. My name is Freedom, and I'm today's host. Joining me today are my two very good friends, Enyo and Crow. As host of this podcast, I will choose the topic for discussion, and the winner of the discussion in my eyes will host the next episode. Well, what's up, my boys? How y'all doing? I'm Just doing me doing y'all might yep. lose power every se any second now so yeah. it'll be exciting lose power. i'm on edge your I, edge i actually Sorry. don't hear You're edging right currently now? so i think it's far away the the storm yeah enyo was being an old man earlier and he was talking about how this storm is exactly what they needed the weather's going crazy you know but it, it's it's all good for society and wherever he is Look, according, according to, the, brown. to the farmer al almanac to the farmer almonds that we uh, yeah, Lord, ask the about the uh, weather yeah we have a small crowd of scientists almonds that uh let us know whether or not the storm's coming or not and i'm done with this bit because it's stupid <laughs> yeah, i was i was wondering where that was going I was waiting to see where I could jump in. I had zero clue where it was. It just took a turn. The, the almond turned into a weatherman midway through. Um, it's because of my it speech is... impediment. My speech impediment is uh, called stupid. It's hard yeah. to get to and you sometimes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, sometimes my mouth just stops working. I, I think I suffer from severe mini stroke syndrome. It's hard for you to yes and you. It's, it's just hard for you to put together a cohesive sentence. Yeah, like my brain works fine, and I have big words in there. I just can't get them out. No, I mean, I feel that, you know, like I have a completely well thought out, like thing or bit or like, you know, idea that I want to say. And then when it comes to actually speaking it out loud, it just completely gets fumbled. As the only one in here with a actual like medically diagnosed speech impediment. Well, I had one. Entire... I, first of all, I don't believe you. I think, you, I think you're being you, ableist you, right now. How dare you tell him he doesn't have one? How dare during you Pride invalidate month? my truth? <laughs> did you just say during Pride Month? Yeah, I did. Happy Pride Month, by the way. What is it? I mean, <laughs> yes, Happy Pride Month, but what does that have to do with speech impediments? If you have to ask your... Okay, hang on. I don't want to go down that road. We're uh, Moving on. <laughs> Small... <t> <laughs> Freedom, well, tell us have? about your. Well, tell us about your speech impediment. A as someone Freedom, with, the... what do you have for us today? Let's let's move, let's table this. What is okay. What is your speech impediment? Mine. Yeah, you said you had one, or. Well, so, initially, when I was growing up, I had a um, like pretty aggressive lisp, on like things that I would say, um, and that stemmed from, when my teeth were growing in. I believe it, I think it was my adult teeth when they came in. They grew, uh, like, angling backwards into my mouth so that the part that I articulated on my mouth, or, like, yeah, in my mouth was a different spot than, like, I should have been whenever they eventually, like, moved my front two teeth to be pointing outwards like normal teeth would, you know? So because of that, I then had a speech impediment because I would have to articulate in a different spot. So then when they moved it, did you have to relearn to talk or you're, you just talked like normal and the lisp was gone? Well, I, I would talk like I normally did and that's what made it to where I had a lisp, right? So like if I can, I can go back to it right now where with this, this is where I used to articulate in my mouth. But now that I've learned where to actually articulate in my mouth, this is what my voice normally sounds like. 
I feel like I knew you from a pretty young age. I never, I, I never heard you talk like that. I, I, I didn't either. I think. I think you lied. <laughs> well, it was fixed in about the fifth grade. He's lying for clout. Lying for clout. Yeah. I, I'm presenting to have a disability. If, if you, you know, if you want to be so judgmental about our host lisping, mm -hmm. uh, what's your speech impediment? Mine persists to this day, and it's not physical, it's like to this psychological. Day. To this day, son. I've been in these streets. I have a, like a, in the olden days, they called it a stammer. It's really just not, the causes aren't known, but it's been very prominent in my speech patterns as I was a child. I just have trouble with certain types of words at random times or maybe brought on by stress i'll struggle with like words with consonants at the beginning like t's i won't like t -t 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 -t. i won't like do that sort of alliterative stutter i'll sort of get stuck on it and like try to say the word and then give up and then say a different word one time i was at a diner ordering with friends and i could not tell the waitress that i wanted a strawberry shake because i would like mm -hmm. get i would hiss be hissing the s and then like i think a friend sitting next to me was just like strawberry shake and i was like yeah that thank you and everyone <laughs> laughed at me <laughs> what a piece of shit friend oh. no they were helping me out i appreciated okay, it, okay. it was, well, yeah but the ones that laughed at you that's not funny well i, I was laughing too at myself it was like oh. it was chill it was chill it was just like yeah i can't fucking speak well, who was making you nervous? Your friends? Like, was it, it a... It's not, it's not always brought on by stress. It's like, you both have heard me stutter. At... I've known you my entire life. I, I Trust me. I know how to yeah. get it on. I know how to make <laughs> oh. you stutter. <laughs> okay. Okay, what, is, what does that mean? You do, huh? Uh, you just piss him off. Oh. And you'll hear it. <laughs> when he gets mad, it'll come out. That's fair. Which, I mean, I think that's stress, but... That's very interesting. I would say mad or passionate. When you're really passionate about something, I'll hear it every now and then. But honestly, I I don't hear it when talking to you. But when mm -hmm. I go back and well, edit, sometimes I will hear it. But it's you, I, I have to be yeah. looking for it to hear it. You edit it out when, like, in your head when you're speaking to me because that's how you've always interacted with me. You've just known me so long that you don't hear it. But when you're, like, going over a recording and you listening to me talking analytically you're like oh this guy this guy can't can't freaking talk what the hell like spit it out man i don't even think it's that noticeable <laughs> yeah i don't either well you guys wouldn't you've again known me my whole life yeah uh, ain't that big of a deal it's not in times like this it's not bad i had to give a presentation at work like a couple months ago Ooh. i fucked up so bad in front of these Ooh. like work people it was Tough. embarrassing it doesn't happen every time, but when it does, it's like I'm just, I'm just gonna, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna jump off this building. I hate presentations. I, I can do them well now, but I remember like all throughout high school and college, I can feel my face turning red. Like my face gets mm. hot, my eyeballs start to get hot and start to water, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm about as red as a tomato, but I, I need to just carry through. Well, hey guys, I'm back from the okay. power outage. I don't, I don't care anymore, dude. <laughs> I'm back now. Now, now you're back now. Now, uh, I don't, what, what, do, I don't remember what we were talking about. Well, that's the whole point, isn't it? But, um, hosty with the mosty. What's our topic? Damn, really, just shoehorning that in. Mm -hmm. No, no transition. Just trying to go in raw. I can see how it is. I'm going well, in raw, my, my, my pal. My pal, wow. Okay, that we've downgraded, huh? We used to be good friends. We used to be best buddies. Well, I'm not host. And now we're so pals. If you want to be that? You got to make me host, baby. That works. Well, that isn't happening. <laughs> we'll see about that. We will see about that. Unless it's another stupid Star Wars quiz. You're so concerned with like sucking up to the host. I, I'm I not know. concerned. I was not sucking up. That was a challenge, my boy. They're trying to throat this man for the privilege like calm down i'm ready well all right so this is not the uh sorry for coughing into the mic by the way but 
this is not the topic for today, but you said you were feeling argumentative. Uh, and, you know, so I did want to start with a classic this versus that sort of thing. This or that. Ooh. Right. Like we okay. started out with last episode. This is like I said, this isn't the not, topic. Not the topic. Not the topic. No. Because I'd but, love to do a whole thing of this or that. Well, when you're the host, you got it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. Shut the fuck up. But this is just a, this is a little taste, right? So, the this or that for this episode is one thousand Pokemon or one billion lions. Who wins? In a fight. In a fight. Well, now my first question is obviously: Do I get to pick which a thousand Pokemon? Yes. Okay. I, but here's the thing. This is going to work like it does in an RTS in that case, right? Where you can't just pick like, like, let's say you're playing XCOM, right? You can't pick like a thousand sectopods, you know, and just like clear house, right? So it's like tabs. You got to like, you have a set amount of right, money like and you got to, okay, okay. Like if you get a Lugia, you're going to have to throw in like 9,900. Uh, mm. That's right, right? 999 like Magikarps sort of thing. Right. You know? Okay. Like it, so, it has to scale. Here's the thing I know Pikachu and the Squirtle one. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I think there's a Charizard. Well, okay. So let, let's remove you physically choosing them like right here remove from the physically. equation. Let's gonna, remove you physically. Remove me from the building? Yeah. Bouncer. Uh, we need oh, him oh, out. Um, All right, I got him. Up. Sir, Bro, you're going to have to I, leave. Come on. No, Come I, on. Get out. Dude, I paid to be here. I'm sorry, but the host said you got to go. Sorry, you but... yell, get All right, get out that... already. Jeez, hang on. I'm going to shut God. the door. Okay. Fuck he... you. <laughs> God. This man. The drunks. Man, he, yeah, for real. He, he never wants to come back again, huh? We're going to have to ban him permanently. Anyway, well, I don't want you, back. we were talking about Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon, hands down, they're winning. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. hands against down. one billion lions. Yeah, dude, they got. Well, I mean, yeah, numbers, but like fire, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Charizard, go on. Charizard flies, unless it's gonna be like a zombie apocalypse of just of just lions crawling over one another. Oh, hang that on, is hang actually on. One somebody's big knocking. Thing. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Sir, are you gonna? Can you behave now? I lived, bitch. Okay, he's back now. Guess who's back? Yeah. All right. I'm letting him. We'll back let him back. Hey, it's your first strike. Yeah. Okay. Two more, and uh, I don't know what what happens after two more. Well, I guess you better yeah, fuck around and find out. Yeah. Try him. So, Gardevoir is in. She's an item in Smash Bros. Yeah. Doesn't she give like a ring of protection or something? Uh, she's a psychic Pokemon, so she has a yeah. bunch of different psychic powers that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, oh, and Pokemon have PP limits. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'd say all of them. Come on, I'm gonna need you to <laughs> not be a child here, Crow. Uh, Come on now. <laughs> Well, I no, I, their, I'm just. Their moves have a. No, set I, was, I was thinking about. I was thinking about something else that was funny. Got you. So tell me more mm -hmm. about these PP. <laughs> so, so they they have a set amount that they can use those moves. Do we get items? Do you get? I, no, this isn't like you're casting a thousand Pokemon and then someone else is casting a billion lions. So I think this is just like I think wild in the Pokemon wild don't have PP limits. Okay. I think they can use moves as much as they want, or I think, as much I think as, the, right. as the random is. Are their move sets randomized? I think you're thinking a little too much about the logistics of their powers. Uh, How small? You know, this kind of sounds like a similar thing that somebody brought okay, up well, last, we can... pro, last podcast about uh, you know body parts that don't really affect you and it doesn't... blah blah blah. Well, you know, this, okay, this sounds okay, okay. a lot. Okay. Like that you can one. think about every single move set of every <laughs> single Pokemon. We can we can we can turn this into the topic. The second, let's just talk about this the entire the time. Let's go let's start, start with Charizard. Talking. He has <laughs> he has fire. <laughs> what else? 
He's got the scratch. Lions. He's got dragon type stuff. Can can the lions breathe fire? You can te you can use TMs lions. to teach um, Charizard Are lightning they? moves, grass moves, like. Well, now hold on. You say they're. Re I want to talk about the lions a little bit. Are they like yeah. Simba? Are they like cartoon lions? Are they like? Are, are they all one pride, or are they like separate prides? <laughs> Ooh, let's let's say they are one pride, right? And then because they, because Pokemon are like animated, let's say they are Simba lions, that they are also animated. Animated Simba lions. Are they pride. baby okay. Simba or adult Simba? Adult Simba. Good. How old are the lions? Good point. I, I would say I would say it's either adult Simba. Or like, what's the what's like the prime for a lion? Is it whenever Simba young. was like the the adolescent? Uh, My or, age. Yeah, I think it's when he's like very hormonal yeah. and like in the mating stage lion. of his life. Because mm -hmm. when creatures uh, reach like uh, what's that sexual maturity, like they they got a lot of especially things like that are as territorial as lions and stuff like that like they'll, they'll they fuck got like each that other testosterone up, my guy yeah according yeah. to google the prime age for a lion is between the ages of six and eight okay oh, so let's say older than i thought let's say we've got like a seven-year-old simba mm -hmm. animated in uh -huh. heat oh right i don't what, think we got a thousand of those guys heat. I, I don't. Yeah, I, that's I just, more... yeah, that's like a strictly female. Like, are you telling me that's this this thing? dude's like bleeding? Well, that's not what. He's not in. Heat. I was just. A, I just... was just assuming that's what like. Uh, no, females like, are in popped heat. Up on hormones. Yeah, that's a heat thing. Males are just horny. It's basically a, different... a period, but it's not a period. Well, that then, makes sense. it's an Let's ovulation say... thing. It's an ovulation. I'm not gonna. Though. I'm not going to expose myself by showing how little I know about the menstrual cycle. I was about I, to say, move on from that. I know it's different in the animal kingdom. Well, then let's not protect, protect. Let's not pretend to know, okay, what we oh, don't. I'm not pretending shit. I know, boy. A thousand seven-year-old Simbas, horny, <laughs> versus um, a thousand Pokemon. Of any kind, or uh, it was a and billion. Wild, Simbas, so they don't have PP limits, and I can't give no them PP items, limit. so I can't give them TM moves. Well, it's not it's not you giving them the stuff. It's it's a thousand wild Pokemon. Yeah, but you're I mean, not controlling them at all. Not okay. So you actually, can't give them anything. Wait, 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 wait. But you can't give them anything. It's just they hold are on, plopped in the scenario. On, hold on, you bring up a point. There are a thousand wild Pokemon, and, and I'm not controlling them? Nope, they just do whatever the frick they want to. Are they on the same team against the Lions? Yes. Will they support each other? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The Pokemon will support the Lions? No, the Pokemon no, will oppose. support each other. Oh, the Pokemon are on the same... Okay, so it's like... Yes. Okay, okay. I honestly would go for the Lions. Really? <laughs> are you thinking, like, zombie horde style? Like, are these lions just like in a mass mob of claws and fur and and, and yeah? Like, what kind meat? of setting are we talking about? Are here? they just like, like yeah. clawing over one another, starving, horny? Like, just... where are the lions dropping on the Fortnite map? You know, like is it, let's is say it in the city or just like plains. Let's say this is North America. If there were no like cities and stuff like that built, just nature, North America, nature, like that entire well, that's... area. That's still like, is it in a, is, is it on a mountain or is it in, in the ocean? Like a, a lake? No, I'm saying like, like kind of, everything is spread the across oh, the so entirety of North America. So they're not all grouped up. Yeah. No. It's I, like guerrilla warfare across the entire continent. No, Correct. this is more like who can survive the longest. You have a billion lions spread out across North America and then you have only a thousand Pokemon. So... Yeah, they are actively trying to like you know fight against each other, just like naturally, you know. Or the like that's Pokemon the group that's up. the instinct that they have is that they need to fight each other. Okay. Like Planet of the Apes style. Are the Pokemon grouped up? No, it's just it's just all like spread out, whatever you know. Ugh. Like they can find each other and like group up and like you know, hang out. I mean, you know, I don't know the intelligence of a Pokemon. Like, are they just stupid? 
Are well, gonna, I mean, there are, are like they Pokemon know scientists. To use the, well, I guess they do. Wild Pokemon do use move sets. Not particularly good move sets. They just use whatever. It's typically randomized. I don't know. I'm still going with the lions. I'm going with Pokemon. I so, think that the lions are more cons- would be more consistent in like their attack patterns and just the variance in the like skill level of the Pokemon is just it it lends itself to it going in the lions' favor. I also think the lions would be more likely to group up when together because they're used to being in pride, whereas wild Pokemon they'll work together, but they're not used to like fighting well, together. Well, there's a fatal flaw though. Males don't typically group together in prides. Ooh. That and is Especially true. horny males. I mean, they're going to be fighting amongst each other more than they're going to be. Like, they're, they'll see... Counterpoint. Like, like counterpoint. We didn't, spe- we didn't specify the ratio in the pride. I, sa- I said it's a, a billion Simbas. What do you mean you ratio? A, you said it's a... Th- the, the, the ratio, you know, you go to a party and you're like, hey, the ratio here sucks. We're leaving because it's all dudes. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's, it's it, all dudes. It's, it's a billion. It's all dudes. It's a billion symbols. Well, we, we hadn't said that before. And it's not a billion. I symbols. did it's say a that. thousand. Your number's wrong. No, he said billion. He said a thousand I, Pokemon. Oh, yeah, God. I did accidentally say okay. 1000 Simbas then, earlier. I do apologize. It, yeah, yeah, you did. If it's a billion of anything, it's winning. Do you know how much a billion is? Yeah. Okay, you got a point. Here, here is counterpoint to that. So, do they have a chain gun the, or something like? What took out laser? the? What took out the dinosaurs? Right. God. Next question. Asteroids. So the asteroid hit took out a large quantity, but the thing that really killed the dinosaurs, I think aside it was from God, it was that Resource. the like, um, like smoke and all of that stuff killed all of the rest of the things that were like you know they couldn't were read used for food the bible and like <laughs> the smog and all of that right the smog they like suffocated all of them they were sinners and god that's why god smited, smited them, them those reptilian they did not bastards the confession. they did not receive absolution and did not enter the kingdom of heaven <laughs> poor Rex. i mean have you ever have you ever been to heaven have you seen that there are no what? dinosaurs i haven't what? I mean, he's been to Bible camp. That's close enough, right? Yeah, that's true. true. I told you. He did. Yeah. He did stare Jenny with the braces down yeah. after he was roofied. Yeah. You know, and then proceeded to puke on her. So I think I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So anyway, the thing well, that killed the dinosaurs was the aggressive change in weather. Right. Good point. That was. Are you, are you telling me the Pokemon can change the weather? More than weather. They are absolutely can. It's more than weather. It's across the entire Earth. It's the yes. ecology. Yes, they Bro, can. That is that is, that is one the of their. That's that like is a village. one of their powers. That is a small village of Pokemon. Yeah, they can change it for like a zip code, not the continent, let alone the world. I'm just saying, like, uh, okay, then in your logic, right? Let's say they find their way together, right, and then they just start on a war path throughout north america of scorched earth right of destroying the environment that they leave behind sounds good to me you are now increasing the so they're not only wild pokemon group together they have tactics now yeah that's i never why said that I they didn't saying, have tactics. like because typically your wild pokemon don't really have tactics it's based on a random number generator you know how the game works are there still a billion lions? Yeah. There's still a billion lions. Yeah, they would. Here's the problem. If there were so many lions, do you think they would like outcompete one another and start fighting amongst themselves? Or are these I was it a rule from the beginning that they have to be in cohesion? The, the billion lions the billion lions could just rush the Pokemon and like a few million would die and then they just crush them. With, but here's the literally thing, right? crush them. Yeah, zombie horde style. You're not taking into account the flying Pokemon, the ghost Pokemon, the Pokemon that can morph themselves into a lion like a sleeper cell agent. But it's like an RTS. You can't have all of those in there. Ditto. I, I, and I agree. Yeah, you can't have all dittos, but let's say there's one. There's one ditto. 
And for as long as that ditto is alive as a lion, he can wait all of the other ones out and the Pokemon still win. I have a question. Go ahead. I don't know too much about Ditto besides the fact that he changes his appearance. Does he also mask his smell? Like, do you think the lions would be able to tell that that's not a lion? He's like, hey, uh, this lion kind of smells like goopy pink stuff. Well, he always has like the same eyes, right? So they'd just be like, hey, look, he doesn't have our eyes. And then they'd kill him. I think Ditto, at least in the trading card game, his creations always kind of look a little doughy. Yeah. And it's so cute. (laughs) It's like, oh, a Play-Doh Pikachu. (laughs) I believe from the the animated show, it's like uncanny, right? And like you can't really tell. Got you. So these lions are stupid and they can't smell. Yeah. Got you. Uh, I don't know. The fact that you said billion still kind of pushes me towards... I mean, but if, if you said that, like, I could call in a legendary if it's, like, reasonable, I mean, I might just call in, like, one of the new ones, uh, Arceus or something. I mean, that mm-hmm. bitch can move time. True. Like, I, I'm i just thinking about it from a perspective of, I there's, like, it's, like, brute strength, you know, in terms of the lions versus the sheer amount of utility that a, even a single Pokemon has, right? Like a Pikachu could clear an entire pride of lions in an instant, you know? I feel like, okay, if you try to elect, electrocute a lion, they're not like humans where you zap them a little bit and they go down shaking. They're huge, tough animals. And let's... Have you seen Thunderbolt? You gave me a billion li- Do you under... Like, if you'd given me a thousand lions, you'd have all valid points, but you gave me a billion lions. I feel like you're not understanding the enormity of that number. Wait a second. Their dragon-type Pokemon can learn a move called Meteor Rush. Dragon these nuts on your face, yeah. And this move basically causes meteors to hit the ground. Mm. And they just make the lions go extinct. Is there like I'm a saying. can they can they win by um uh kill from the grave? Does yeah. that count? Okay. Well it it, it can we there get has to like be Groudon one... out here to make the sun brighter and then just cook all these lions? It kills all the Pokemon, but it also kills the lions. Well there has to be one like Pokemon standing for the Pokemon to win, there has to be one lion standing for the lion to win. Oh. Uh, hmm. But like, it, what you're saying though is absolutely valid with like, you just bring out the sun to cook them, right? Like, whenever a whenever a Pokemon uses like sunbeam or like solar beam or whatever it is, uh, that like changes the, the weather, it doesn't hurt the Pokemon, right? It only hurts the thing that it's attacking. Uh, I believe it depends on their typing. So, like, Groudon does Sunny Day, which changes weather, but that's not necessarily... Like, it just makes the sun really bright. Uh, There are things like Blizzard, which will cause damage, and Sandstorm, which will cause damage. Mm -hmm. But if it is a type that doesn't take damage from that, then they're fine. Right. But lions are just squishy little mammals, so they'll, they'll... they're, they're going to have a rough time. I do see what you're saying about the sheer number, but I do think that the utility outweighs If you even said that. a million lions, one million lions, I'd be like, you know what? It's going to be a hard battle. They might eat a roar. You are just a suck up. That's what you're doing. No, 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 no. I think, just because I think he the disagrees Pokemon with would you. win with a million. I do also share the difficulty of a billion because that is a million million. It's so many. Which is a lot. And like you said, they could just bomb rush. But, I mean, I feel like it's cheating if you could just call in, like, Lugia and then the rest Magikarp. Yeah. Because Lugia could just stomp all of them. Lugia flies. What if one of the lions is Aslan? Hmm? Uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You know, he's going to split the table, rise again. Yeah. (laughs) And then, like, you know, Pikachu goes into the wardrobe. If you get Lugia, we and the lions get Aslan. How about that? What now? What is Aslan? Where is your god oh. now? Oh, you oh, haven't no. read? That? You don't know about Aslan? No. This guy is in the Chronicles of Narnia Enjoyer. You've made a fatal mistake. 
I have never seen Nar I have never seen Narnia in my entire life. Oh my god. It's a book written by Christopher Nolan, right? Or is that an actor? No, it's something Lewis. See, uh, Clive Staples Lewis didn't like become the forefather of like fantasy along with J.R.R. Tolkien, by the way, to be slandered like this. What yeah. the fuck? Uh anyways. <laughs> They were best friends. Okay. It's my bad memory, Token, okay? Don't, don't trash Token me. J.R.R. Token was a devout Catholic, and Clive was an atheist. And then they, like, became friends and took walks together. And Clive became one of the leaders in Christian thought, like, for the time. And it's still, like, talked about and, and studied to this day. I didn't know and he was an atheist. Of Narnia. He was me. J.R.R. Token converted him. It is heavily Christian. All the motifs and the metaphors and the uh, heavily. I mean, Aslan is Jesus. He rises again. Yep. Speaking of Christianity, let's talk about some of the one of those one of those sins. You know. Let's talk about greed. Okay. Is this the topic? From Full Metal Alchemist. I'll get there. Okay. Not from Full Metal Alchemist, although it uh, is a great show. I just finished. If it you're talking about it. Brotherhood. I yeah, did finish okay. it. I'm watching it again. Uh, could we really quickly talk about um, the little girl? I haven't girl seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't, it. I, haven't seen, I haven't seen the entire thing. Okay. What do you mean, yeah? You, you, Bro, you know what you, I'm talking about, hang right? On. I do know what you're talking about. You knew enough to know that Brotherhood was a good one, but you haven't seen the whole thing? Yeah, I haven't seen the whole thing. I'm making my way through it. But that's good. Uh, Keep going, because it's amazing and also sad. I need to get Crunchyroll on my TV, so that way I can uh, just like watch it on there, because I don't want to watch it on my iPad anymore. Don't get it on uh, Fire Stick. I, I don't, don't really get it on Fire think Stick? that we'll ever get uh, a, um, a, 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 a a thing, but, you know, where they, a sponsorship uh, from Amazon, but uh, Fire Sticks are trash. And, uh, My Fire suck. Stick is fucking great. They are terrible <laughs> at running Crunchyroll. Imagine not having an Apple TV. My old Xbox okay. can run Crunchyroll flawlessly. My microwave can run Crunchyroll. Dude. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you how, how do you watch your microwave? That, like <laughs> reminds you what kind of groceries you need, and then like also like I don't know, My tells you if your chicken's bad. My microwave will shame me for the prepared pre-processed shit I put in there for dinner. <laughs> like, Does yours hey, keep track of how many like, calories this is that like, you're consuming in a day? This is like 200 carbs over your your goal. <laughs> Are you sure you want to eat this? <laughs> no, it's yeah, but, not even. It's more subvert than that, right? Where it just goes. It, it has like the different tunes for whenever you're done, right? So you finish making like you know a green good meal, right? Like a healthy thing, and it goes. The ding, and then uh, you finish like cooking up something like ex insanely unhealthy. Let's say you like reheated some fucking McDonald's or some shit, right? And it goes, mm. hold on a you second. Know? Um, I just want to stop this podcast. You reheat my uh, McDonald's in the microwave. It's yeah. It's basically you, cardboard at that point. Yeah, it's it's unedible. No, just like have the you nuggets. ever heard of this new invention called a uh, okay, I can't talk. I'm gonna give Finish up. Finish the joke, bro. Take it. Finish the joke. Take it. I I'm giving no, up. No, you you felt the need my to brain, interrupt my yeah, fucking my statement. Brain. You, you felt the need. Go ahead. So bad right now. You had to pipe up. The floor is yours. <laughs> an air fryer. Have you ever heard of an air fryer? It's basically a glorified. Wow. It's a glorified what a oven. Good one. It's air fryer. Oh my god. It's Dude, a, you're dead. The that was eagle devastated. has fucking landed on that, that punchline. You're <laughs> devastated right now. I would not want to be you, Freedom. Oh my god, he got you so good. <laughs> Honestly, I just feel like I have to give my responsibilities of host over to him, just based on that banger of Dude. a joke. Right All there. right, you. well, let's test you today's host. And yo is back, baby. <laughs> I said I feel like, not that I did. Oh, never mind. He roasted you in that air fryer. <laughs> See, that's how you tell a fucking joke. <laughs> Good one, Crow. But, okay. Today, we are going to talk about what other people would consider to be a sin, greed. 
right? And the like alleyway that we're going to be discussing this through is money, right? I'm sure that all of you guys have heard about the most recent uh, event that is sweeping Twitter and the news cycle, the submarine that has gone missing uh, for the Titanic tours. Have you guys heard Just about that? Literally today, mm -hmm. my, my family has told me about this. I don't keep current with the news, but I have heard about this. You guys have not heard about this? I So... Um, I saw something on the news about it, and then someone just, like, informed me of what was going on today at work. Okay, so, I'll give you guys the little, the little paraphrase of the situation, right? So, this dude, um, who I believe was called the Innovation Daredevil, or something like that, has been, um, or Daredevil of Innovation, I believe is his title has been putting on these tours of the Titanic in this sub that, like, he made, like, fully on by himself, right? And he has all of these statements where he's like, man, they just come out with all these regulations. It's really holding back the industry. All these things that they're doing for safety is just holding back progress, right? And today, or not today, I believe it was yesterday, he took a vessel of extremely wealthy people down there. This submarine trip to the Titanic is an extremely, like, you know, you have to have a lot of money to be able to book your spot on this trip. And he got all of those rich people down there in the sub, and at about an hour and 45 minutes, they lost contact, and they are now lost at sea uh, in the submarine. It's a terrible story. It's horrible. And oh. this person that, you know, um, which we call it, is like the daredevil of innovation, like hates safety regulations, all of this stuff. Absolutely horrible. But this is such a tremendous waste of money. This is mm. rich people shit, right? And that is the thing, that, or that is the topic of today's podcast rich people shit rich things people that shit. the normal person would not ever do in their entire life right or even think about doing but rich people are just sitting there like ah, i might as well go down to the titanic in a fucking shit tin can right again mm. horrible situation for them they should have had like all their like safety regulations and all that t handled for right but this is something that like no normal person would ever think to do, right? So we right. are discussing rich people shit today. Kind of reminds me of uh, what Mr. Bezos did, went to the moon, just because he could. Go did ahead. He? Did go he ahead. actually go to the moon? Yeah, he did. Uh, cool. Jeff Bezos, right after he, I think he retired before he did it, but mm -hmm. uh, he also took someone from Star Trek. The writer from Star Trek? Like Leonard Nimoy? Or whatever his name is? No. Steven Spe Spielberg? Steven Spielberg? Spielberg was not... He was a director. He is a director. He directs movies. Uh, yeah, he took somebody up there Riker? with him. I'm gonna have to Google this shit. But, uh... Anyways, so yes. yeah, he just did it to do it. And, uh, yep. Rich people shit. Cool. I, I heard that. So, how long have these people on the submarine been gone? How, how they're dead. They're so dead. They've been I, gone. Well, actually, as of this afternoon, apparently they found, um, or like because they've been like searching the water and stuff like that, they can hear these vibrations in the water as if like people are like knocking on something. Right. Oh, that's so creepy. So they, they okay. have like detected like, sound waves and stuff like that of the people like potentially knocking on the submarine is this submarine like, unmanned or, or not unmanned but like rc controlled so this was a big point of controversy Co ugh, controversy God. controversy uh where a lot of regular people are very upset at this but it's actually like the industry norm is that the submarine is piloted by 
Well, so he goes down there in the submarine with them. And he uses a Logitech gaming controller um, to be able to, like, pilot it. It's 30 bucks on, like, Amazon and eBay, right? But apparently this is actually this industry norm of, like, many, like, military planes and, like, all of that stuff. You know, or, like, military drones and stuff all get piloted using, like, Xbox 360 controllers and, like, Logitech controllers and stuff. I've actually heard. But Twitter's very upset. I just got... I just got sent a meme about that, like to, as as of this recording. Oh, really? Yes. Wait, what? Just you just saw a meme about it. I just got sent a meme about this during this recording. I will put <laughs> it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just recently heard about a new. It's a fertility thing that somebody's working on, where they can like pilot this little robot to basically put sperm into a female's uh say the right body part cervix i don't know if that's correct um i and um sure. anyways uh, it's right. piloted by a xbox controller yep so wait is... it, with that can you like choose the genetic traits yes the this was about oh. that yes and that's why it's controversial that's some rich people shit. Yeah. Um, I think they were after... I don't know what trait they were trying to do, but the like end effect is, oh, yeah, well, we could also like customize this baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that, that's something in the near future for, I guess, this product or something. So could well, you, like, character creator a child? I mean... Based on their genetic uh, sequence, yes, you could turn on and turn off certain genes, and that That's would wild. allow certain um, features to show up or not show up. That's crazy. I feel like that's a good development overall, though. It is, in far as like you know, scientifically, cancer yes, and like, well, so this is like a big controversial thing. If you had the power to like turn off autism you know yeah. if you if you had a baby who was going to have down syndrome or or autism or maybe some sort of like uh, a degenerative disease like crohn's disease or something like that to where mm. you're predetermined to get it and basically once you get it you have a certain amount of time to live yeah um if you have the ability to turn that stuff off is is that is that okay well, I think that is a overwhelmingly good thing of, you know, being able to turn off like those diseases because I mean, I I I don't think that anyone would oppose like taking away the markers for like cancer mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. in people, right, before they were born. Mm -hmm. I think that probably the thing that people are worried about is it could lead to a point where you customize a child to get rid of certain traits from society because those traits are seen as not favorable by society which could then lead to like people with those traits being unfairly like treated or because whatever it depends on who's doing the genetic altering like is it the state because if it's the state who gets to choose if your baby has like black or blonde hair mm -hmm. that's a problem if it's the parents and only the parents I feel like there's less of a widespread issue yeah if it's like through a third party thing then i i understand what you mean but like let's say it's like like the m middle class and up right can do these genetic modifications like very easily I mean, you know for a long time it would only be like top one percent could do stuff like that but well yeah but i'm i'm saying once it becomes widely available but even that sucks because then you're then you're leaving the poor people with all the diseases and, and, and that's, mental illnesses that's, and stuff. That's I mean, exactly the point. That's, that's exactly the problem. Because then you're just going to have some form of segregation or something. Oh well, they can't go to that school because all those kids have problems. <laughs> that's awful. Um, okay, so that that's some rich people shit, right? Is like, at least for now, right? It's like. Um, being able to genetically character create your own child, right? Like that's pretty that's pretty horrifying. What is 
Well, now it's your, I guess it's your turn, Crow. Like, you got something in the tank? And you came up with that on the spot. With what? The... Some rich people shit. Oh, well, I mean, if we're talking about rich people shit, we're talking about a while back, people were mad at Taylor, T-Swift, for taking her private jet everywhere. Like, literally for oh, yeah. five-minute drives. For what? Five-minute flight. She would take her private jet just everywhere. Like, to go to, like, I don't know, what would be a 30-minute drive? Take the private plane. Yeah. I mean, hey, what what can get you there faster if you're as important as T Swift, you know? Right. I, I, I will say I'm an unapologetic, unapologetic Taylor Swift. Not, uh, you're, I'm a fan. You're a super okay. fan. Okay, let's just call. I'm not it what a super it is. fan. You're a super I'm fan. a fan. She, you have a couple posters on your wall. A little. He is a queen. Okay. We do love Taylor in this household. Are you a stan? I'm not a stan. A, I a, think that stans are weird. I think of, stans cross into a territory. A piece of uh -huh. skin from your forearm that you uh, got removed after she signed it. Well, yeah, but that's normal things. On your desk. Yeah. That, that's normal. That's normal shit. That's normal people shit. Right. But, I mean, I don't know. It's like, I do understand, like, the the private jet is probably not necessary, but also at the same time, like, like what, what was like the actual distance? Do you know? I know nothing else about it. I just know mm. that it happened. Well, I'm assuming if it's in like LA, she's avoiding traffic. And then also you have to keep in mind, she's, I mean, she's T Swift. She's an yeah. international star. So like, it could just be a thing in the grocery safety. store. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure she'll die just from, how crazy people get yeah people you know, are wild man i have a similar one with the private jet um uh, michelle obama was under heat for her use of the like white house uh air force one helicopter yeah uh, apparently yeah. she'd take it to like go vacationing like every weekend she'd go take the kids to like a different beach or like a different golf course see it's stuff like that though where it's like, I feel like that stuff is completely fine. Because it's like, sure, I mean, it's not great for the environment. But at the end of the day, like, that's not the prime issue, right? If you're getting upset at one person for taking a helicopter somewhere, you know, then like, do you still drive your car every day? Sort of situation, you know? Yeah, Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't and that's also a, a thing for so. safety. But that's also a thing for safety, you know? Because she's literally, like, the first lady, and those are, like, the... Are they called the first children? No, they're just... They're just children. <laughs> they're just, they're just children. kids. <laughs> well... They're just the, uh, the Obamas. Just the taking Obamas. The first lady taking the first children out on a nice little vacation. No, you know? but this was, this was, like, every weekend to a different, like, resort somewhere. Like, like I they take a... They abused it, man. I'd take a vacation, you know, to like all these different places. You got, well, for them starting out, they were like, we maybe only got four years. Let's live this up yeah, to the extreme. True. Yeah, my husband's you know? president for a little bit. Let's get, get what we get. While yeah, we get exactly. It. Like if you were president. Let's right? use all these federal tax dollars. Literally. If you were president, right? Like all of like the policy things aside, we don't care about that shit. Most of America doesn't care about that shit. Right. What are you doing, like, as president that, like, is, hmm, what's the way to phrase it? Like, what's, like, the fun things you do as president that you could really only do as a president? Like, you know, like, taking that vacation every single weekend, you know, sort of thing on Air Force One. Like, what's those things that you would abuse as president for your own personal enjoyment? The secretary. God. <laughs> well, what, Bill Clinton tried that out. It didn't work very well. Uh, but yeah, I would say it bit him <laughs> pretty hard. Uh, I feel like you get some sort of celebrity. Like, like once you become president, you're basically a celebrity. And so you have, mm -hmm. you're, you're now in the in-group with the celebrities. So you'll see a lot of presidents like hanging out with some very well-known people. Which is you think that like 
Obama and Taylor Swift just have a group chat? They just hang out on the weekends? Yeah. I don't know. Possibly. I've seen videos of of Obama and Joe and Trump all playing Minecraft together. So, Oh, Hillary too. <laughs> they do that. Yeah. And Bill sometimes, you know. <laughs> Hillary lets him out. Yeah, Bill sometimes joins. Mm -hmm. I've even seen... Uh, What's his name? Uh, JFK joined a few of those. Oh, that's you know? crazy. I knew his head was underneath Disney somewhere. Yeah. Underneath Disney. I mean, possibly so, some rich people shit is uh, we could talk about Disney and how mm -hmm. they own, like, it's very strange, uh, their property rights and, and stuff like that. It, they, they're kind of like their own corporation. And so they mm -hmm. don't pay like state taxes and stuff like that Disney because they are. A, hold on, Disney is a corporation. Yeah, that's what they are. Well, I know that, but it's like a. Uh, you mean it's it, like that their own government? Yeah, document? yeah. Okay. They have like a, they're like a small government in like Disney World. Yes. Or land, well, whichever you, one is. Yeah. I um I think that's a thing, of like there's like a deal. Like, it, like, you're seeing this with Florida, how they're, like, saying we're not going to support that deal anymore. But, like, with California, they have a deal where it's, like, since you are providing this much job or this many jobs and this many things for the economy and stuff like that, we will give you breaks on, like, these ta taxes and stuff like that. So you can expand your business uh, so that way you can create these jobs and, like, bring in most this money. Yes. Um... There are a lot of similar situations where, like, basically it starts out with, like, you have, like, a neighborhood, right? And then it grows mm -hmm. and they form an HOA. And then you have a couple other neighborhoods pop up. And then... Can we talk about HOAs for a second, actually? Yeah, sure. Like, that's some rich people shit, okay? HOAs are absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Is anybody here on an HOA and supports HOAs? Mm, uh, no. Uh, no, I understand why they're there. We though. own houses. <laughs> that, that's very fair. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I kind of get why they have them, though. Um, because there are some, some areas, uh, that I work with that are less than desirable because they do not have an HOA. Well, I think that's more an economic thing than an HOA thing. Uh, it's more about like uh, not having rules and not having to abide by rules uh, because well, okay. a lot of county rules are very lax, especially in Texas. This is this was like the take that I heard for like HOAs and stuff like that is that the people is that people like to be told what to do when they would have already done those things anyways, right? So it's like. Yeah, uh, you would have already, like, maintained your lawn. You would have already taken your trash back, like, every single day right when the trash uh, yeah, was picked up, right, and stuff like that, right? It's Terrible, more but... if you If you tell me to do the dishes when I was going to do the dishes, I'm not doing the fucking dishes. Right. <laughs> I'm going back upstairs. Stick it up to the man. I was going to do it. Yeah. I was going to do it, but since you told me to do it, fuck that. Crow, you're going to have to ignore Crow. He's in his rebellious stage. He's been he like this for a while now. Shut uh, up. Ah, <laughs> uh, that old sport. <laughs> uh, it's tough being spine. the stepdad. Um, anyways. <laughs> I think you're somewhat missing the point of HOAs because HOAs are a governing body for that neighborhood. And so, in turn, they're supposed to provide services to that neighborhood. So they deal with, like your trash contracts unless you're in a city and the city has a trash contract but they also deal with like recycle contracts where they will hire a company to do recycling they also deal with like the amenities so they deal with like the pool people if you have a community pool or something like that so it's, it's yeah but if like i don't a, care for a community pool then i don't care for what they're providing Right, so an HOA probably wouldn't be what you're looking for, but if you're looking for like a neighborhood that has a bunch of amenities and stuff like that, they typically have HOAs. Um, I mean, 
The fees are pretty crazy, but they pay for those things. The overall point of an HOA, which I understand, is to make sure that the property value of the neighborhood is kept up. That's, that's the point of an HOA, right? Like, at bottom line, that's, that's the point. Why do I care about the property value and the niceness of, like, some of those things around me? Like, I, I'm just because doing my own thing. Because if your neighbor is a crackhead and also a mechanic on the side, and he decides to just leave his half-project boats out in his front yard, that brings down the value of your house. And now you can't sell your house when you want to move because it's yeah, but I don't, valued it way it, less. You're going to care if I like my house, house, I won't move. Well, that's if you're going to get in a forever oh, that home. Was the, but people that like, was the perfect parent response. You're going to care when you own a house. You are. You're going to care when you're own it's, it's an asset. If you're thinking house about that I never houses will. as assets, you want to buy a house and you want, to, you want it to be worth more You know when you live there. That's how a lot of older people, like our parents and stuff like that, generated wealth. Was they I just, bought houses when they're cheap, and now they can sell houses when they're pretty damn high. Uh, but, I just yeah, like if you got trashy people who move rules. in and just don't give a shit about how their house looks or or making sure that they repair their roof so their house doesn't cave in, you know. People aren't going to want to buy your house because you're right next to that shit show. But the thing is, I just don't care for all of the, like, overbearing rules. Like, you can't... Like, you have to admit that a lot of HOAs take it way too far with that stuff, right? Where it's like, you can't park in the street in front of your house that you bought, right? But you can't park in the driveway there. of your house. Have you, you ever you, been you down a neighborhood why? where people double park? Because people will what, fucking what, do it if they want to. What do you mean double parking? Where you have like two cars just parked, just taking up the whole road. Just because, oh, well, I own that house, so I'm going to park over there. As long as you can still drive down the road, I don't That's see what the, the problem, problem is. problem, though. You, you almost can't. I mean, there's some houses down here that people have like their toy haulers, which is like a 40-foot trailer with vehicles on it parked in the middle of the road. and so. You're like having to wait for cars to go so you can go when it's supposed to be a two lane highway, like road. Like it's, it's really annoying. That is the most suburban problem I've ever heard. You it's had to not wait. It's a suburban problem. You it's to a traffic wait problem. Five seconds. You had to wait five seconds for the other oncoming car to pass so then you could pass on the road. I mean, okay. Apparently, you just don't, do not care about any. I don't know. Do you just keep your head down when you walk into your apartment or something? Like if your neighbor yeah. if your neighbor's just like decides, you know what? I would like to put a couch in front of my door and I'm just gonna sit out there and like smoke cigarettes on this couch. And it's like right next to your door, so you just have to pass them every single day. Would that not annoy you after a little while? Well, okay, there's a difference between doing that like in an apartment complex and at a house. Because he can do whatever he wants on his own property. Right, but when you build houses that are so close to each other, I mean, it's it's not like you're going to see your neighbors every day. If he wants to smoke in front of his house, what's my problem no, with that? No, that's, not, that's not my... My example was for apartments because I was trying to downsize it. But, I mean, I have a similar one for apartments. Um, I have a neighbor who owns jet skis and a boat, and he parks them... Mm -hmm in spaces there are only a certain number of spaces in the apartment and you're not supposed to be allowed to have those vehicles parked in the apartment and so he's taking up spaces so then whenever people get in at late at night or if you have guests there's nowhere to park because people have things that they're not supposed to have well if it's a rule that is enforced by the apartment then yeah then it's, it's wrong for him it. to right. do that that's why hoas are a thing because the county, him, whenever you go to okay, the county that's and you're not whining, an equivalent you're like, example. Hey, hey, my neighbor, for some reason, bought a bus, and it's broken down, and he's been parking it in front of my house. It's the road. I don't own that, but he's parking it in front of my house. And the county's well, like, look, uh, that's not my problem. Well, obviously, but okay, it's different if it's like in front of your driveway. Not right? your driveway, because but your house. Like you, you wake up in the morning, 
you know, you do your naked Pilates. You, mm -hmm. you know, you, I do you my got, goat yoga. Exactly. You got your coffee in your hand. You open your curtains, and there's your neighbor's bus. You're yeah, just I just like, don't really you know, care. Okay, okay, that, that's fine. I mean, maybe that's a bad take. I don't know. I, I just, I just personally wouldn't care, like if they, because in my head, that's the road. Here's They're allowed another, to park there. Here's another separate issue that you probably don't think about. Um, let's say you live next to a hoarder. You don't necessarily okay. care that there's a hoarder next to you because it does you know it, it's on their property as long as their shit doesn't cross the line and get on your property it doesn't bother you however every time you go outside in your backyard there are like millions and millions of flies and you're mm -hmm. like where the hell are all these flies coming from every time i open my back door flies come all in the house and i don't understand where all these flies are coming in. oh it turns out this hoarder has like 20 cats living in there that just defecate mm -hmm. and shit and piss everywhere which is breeding flies and now those flies are your problem nobody's gonna save you you can't spray anything to get rid of them because they're just breeding them so like that's why you have rules like that so you just you can't have like public safety issues typically cities have that it's called a city ordinance it's like a big HOA so two points right the first is that we're crossing into extremely out there examples, like okay. parking a gigantic oh bus God. in front of a car. <laughs> no, and, it's not it, extremely. And, and, yeah, people have campers, and cats. they put campers, and, and they yo, just have them everywhere. And yo, do you see what this man does? He this man... Your reasonable example and says, well, in, in the extreme case that this happens, maybe I'd be wrong, but in normal... In normal times, I'd, I'd be right because I'm I'm always right about things. No, I that's a this, legitimate point that I'm just making. Him. That I is a legitimate exact... point that I've just made. I had this argument with him last time. Are you it was ready? About a different thing, Are you ready for a pullback? I'm I'm gonna pull us back into last episode because I edited it and I've watched it three times now. Um, Crow, you were not following his rules because you said castration, which removes completely removes your ability to breed, right? However, I said removal of the penis. You can still breed without the penis. Doesn't work very good. And yo, that's the dumbest fucking point I've ever heard you make. He didn't say completely remove. You said castration. That's like balls yes, gone, I right? Did. So you can't produce sperm. However, you can produce sperm without a penis. He said the worst thing... Yeah, yeah, he said it. Dude, he just yourself. kept saying a nose or an ear. So, it's so, like, okay, so well, Crow, he's now saying that you're wrong. You remove an ear. No, I said Crow, his. He's castration. now saying that you are incorrect, and that you were incorrect on how you in interpreted the question, and now you're fighting against him, saying that you were right. His I'm castration not... thing didn't follow your rules. However, whenever what, he didn't I mean, understand your that. rules, and you were giving examples. Your rules are stupid. <laughs> that was my point. The rules are in, the question was incomplete. Because if you lose your ear, if you had an ear and then you lose your ear, that does affect your hearing. You guys are hearing. both insufferable with Hang this on. bullshit. No, you, you guys both knew me. what I meant. You, no, I, you I, I know the point you're going to make. You I know the point wrong. you're going to make. You argue wrong. I know, you're gonna, I know the point you're going to make because Crow made it to me a million times. And I and explained to him it, thoroughly. I explained to him thoroughly what I was saying with multiple examples. And then he said he understood my point. Yeah, I understand what you're getting at, but it's dumb. Even your own examples don't exactly follow your point. What? Why do you get, why are you guys just arguing with the premises of my question? You've argued with every single premise of every single question I've because presented. Because you ask dumb questions, that's why. Why don't you think <laughs> some good questions? That's the point of the show! <laughs> <laughs> the show's not dumb questions. The show is... Just talking. It's forgettable. I thought, I thought the discourse about the Pokemon versus the lions was good. Yeah, that was fun until yeah. I started asking legitimate questions, and then you got yeah. All you angry asked, "What's the fucking move set? Can we go through? Can I give them like the the specific powers that I want on the CDs? Since they're wild Pokemon, <laughs> their moves are going to be random generated." I'm sorry, <laughs> we're being a little too intellectual. About? I'm sorry being too intellectual for you. Like, that's the point of this. We, what do you want me we to want say? to analyze the question. We want to get a, a realistic answer to a nonsense question. 
Exactly. And and I gave you my dumbass question, but you didn't like that. You wanted me to elaborate. I said uh, Pokemon, obviously, because Charizard and fire. And you're like, go on. So then I went on, motherfucker. When I say nonsense question, by the way, I don't mean like if red is in purple, what is green? Like, that's a nonsense question. The question has to be like yeah. a ridiculous premise, but it has to be like defined. And that's where we were miscommunicating. And well, that's we not were right, but... trying to define it. However, based on where we would pick and prod, you would get angry and you would want us to stop defining it. <laughs> no, I got angry because you guys were consistently bringing up the points you were previously making. You guys said castration five fucking times because when I said no why... five fucking times. Uh, I didn't I, I, say look, castration. I, I said losing it. the pee pee. Okay, that's not castration. That's just that's I, just the dick part. Look, I said castration, and I would say, okay, castration is not not valid. By exactly. The then he asked if you an example, and you said and nose, I, and then we were like, well, hang on invalid. a second. Nose like might also affect your mating issues or it did. Okay. mating like being able to get a, a mate or no and you know, smelling and you know if you say mating he's gonna blow up he, he that's a trigger word for him okay he does I'm not sorry. like that word i'm sorry. about to lose my fucking shit I'm sorry. <laughs> actually i'm not sorry okay because i also we talked about birthmarks crow said birthmark and you said yes and i said hang on a minute if you have a birthmark you might not be chosen as a mate. God damn. Because you're ugly. Send him off. <laughs> you're God. He's going to break his <laughs> closet door. I don't know why you guys t- attached so hard to mating. <laughs> I, I, I didn't bring up mating. I didn't bring up mating. I didn't bring it up. You did bring it up. No, I didn't. You said, okay, I, I'll give you this. I brought up castration that was my first example you shot it down saying it would completely remove your ability to mate Mm -hmm. right and then you guys kept bringing up mating as the thing that it was supposed to not like impede on when the thing that it wasn't supposed to impede on was destroying your ability to do something okay so we were i i see why you're angry you are angry because we took your... We used your example in our argument. No, because it was... no, we took his, uh, what he shut us down with, whatever the word is for that, and he and we turned it into a, a new constraint. Because you said, oh, well, castration affects mating. We were like, okay, so one of the constraints is it can't uh, get in the way of mating. And then you said no, and we're like, hang on a minute. I ain't fucking no Vold- Voldemort looking motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, that might be a thing for some people. Yeah, exactly. So the nose is not an example. Look, look, look. Here's the thing. Here's where I landed in the 30 minutes that I argued with this man after our last recording. It was actually a whole lot longer than 30 minutes. We yelled for 30 minutes and then we talked for 30 minutes, I feel like. (laughs) But I landed on, here's where we disagreed, okay? When he phrased the question, what I had a problem with was he said... A disfigurement to the body. I'm paraphrasing. That, like, that gets in the way. That was like it, it is. It is. It impedes something. Some ability that you had is just can't do it anymore. It's an inconvenience, right? It's a huge inconvenience. That's gotcha. essentially what. But he it said. doesn't harm how, my function, correct? How he how he enforced it, and what he used to shoot down my castration proposition, was it would completely remove your ability to mates to breed to whatever you want to, to reproduce right. right he added a new constraint a new rule no, the constraint no, that's no here is so he didn't add that the, as a constraint. the mating let's call that x he, he right that is a variable that will that can be interchanged with different things the qualifier is the thing that was always the same of completely removes the ability right now to do x the phrase completely removes the... See, if I define ability as hearing well, if I cut off my ear, I've completely removed my ability to hear well. I can still hear. I can't hear well. Yeah, you I hear no at the same frequency well. of like a lizard. 
They just have holes in the head. That's what you got. Now. That, you don't have don't the, you don't have the conic shape of your T-Rex ears. T-Rexes have good ears. I don't know if that's completely true, but again, if you t- hearing like I, I do you can't not remember function the... normally anymore. No. In the same way that I can't function normally without my balls or whatever. Do you? That not... was my point. Do you know? His remember... language was what? Go ahead. I'm cutting you off. Please go. Do ahead. you not remember? The... Oh, say your piece. What's going on? Do you not remember the? Sorry. Uh... What? What did you say? <laughs> do you not remember the, the uh, in preschool to amplify our hearing we would cup behind our ears i fucking don't what well, no then, that's a, that was a thing yeah yeah was it? and like, like you I see it in every single like, if movie you have bigger ears you know you'll be able to hear better yeah and I you see that in like movies and stuff like that they'll go up to a door and then or like they'll try to like point their ear in a direction to hear something better and they'll cup their hand behind it yeah, it works. Now, yeah. if you completely yeah. remove that and your <laughs> ear, you can't hear very good anymore. Yeah. You're going to be a little hard of hearing. So my problem with your question, original question, Freedom Bird, de- by the way, your language. this, this <laughs> is two weeks in the making, right? We're oh. recording this episode two weeks after that previous episode was shot. I've had two weeks and they have been sitting dumbass. on this for two no, no, no. fucking No, no, no. I've not weeks. been sitting on this. Uh, I don't even, in in spirit of this podcast, I don't fucking remember what the hell brought this up, but it was something you said that pissed me off. God. And then it reminded me exactly of this stupid argument that we had last that I didn't even participate in. I couldn't even get a word in. Uh, because in in this argument here that he just started, I, th- I can't even remember what it was now. Um, Freedom, something about was it? HOAs. It was about HOAs. Yeah. He was arguing with the no. same... Okay. He said Here's. my examples were extreme. No, no, no. no because they are. No, they're because not. Because it's, it's... Your neighbor has 20 cats who shit everywhere. That literally or happens. Someone puts a couch in front of your door and smokes in front of it. That literally or happens. I somebody have an, parks a, a bus in front of your house who puts a lawn chair out in the middle of the hallway, so he can okay, stop you not, for a that, conversation. That but that's like not the, okay. The he HOA doesn't own the hallway. Freedom. Get your chair out of the hallway. Freedom. I want you to understand that people do go to the extremes in the world in real life like you can see people shitting in the streets in places where the cost of living ain't too high if if you're if your next door neighbor if your neighbor across the street like put up a flag of him spreading his hairy asshole and you had to look at that every time you opened your door you would want something done about it but it's his property it's his flag the vast majority of the human population the vast majority of the population is degenerates okay you are not everyone's like you, grow. Not a, you're projecting right now, okay? I, we, okay. If, what you do no. with your asshole is your prerogative, okay? It is, and you will wake up to something very similar tomorrow morning. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we, the the three of us, grew up in a very insulated, bubbled, you know, sort of middle class, possibly upper middle class communities. Okay? Yeah, but then I moved to Lubbock. And For a we bit. were raised in very nice communities that didn't have asshole flags. And did have HOAs. Yeah. I understand so, your point of like them going too far with things. So my parents bought a foreclosed house. And because the house was foreclosed, it had like a target on it to where the people who like did inspections of HOA mm-hmm. stuff and would write you tickets for things yeah they wrote tickets for us when we were moving in my dad had a trailer outside because we were mm-hmm. in like we were moving the there was stuff yeah. on it and they wrote us a ticket we're like and my dad fought it and got it appealed um now a little interesting thing with hoas they do have legal powers because they have their own attorneys yeah so if you don't pay the fees or if you just tell them go get lost they'll come after you Mm -hmm. with legal action Mm -hmm. Um, yeah they can like sue you they can like yeah yeah but i think it's important because when you give people a little they'll take it too far and i I see that a lot with my job where you have people who really love mudding and that sort of crowd 
where they have the mm-hmm. big jacked up vehicles and you know they they have 40 foot trailers which i don't know if you can imagine a 40 foot trailer it's huge like blocking a road huge they will just park it there because oh they're going mudding this weekend they're like oh well i gotta go to work so i'm just gonna leave it there and then that trailer just sits there for two weeks and you don't have an hoa so you can't do anything about it yeah like like i said i i understand that there are these like annoyances and stuff like that that like are subverted by hoas you yeah. know i i 100 agree and understand that i just think that with a lot of things it's like controlling the property that you have bought well, right and i think that there is an ex it, there is an extent that that autonomy should not be taken away with from you right shall not be infringed motherfucker <laughs> like <laughs> freedom hey, is yeah, brother. hella pro gun i, I'm I in my, can tell, tell. my Jesus. name is freedom tell bird for a reason <laughs> but uh, uh that it's like that has to be done like, like okay there was a time where this person in our neighborhood had painted their roof a different color than the other houses. They right? took him outside and they shot him. They shot him in front of his kids. Oh, we'll get there in a second. The firing line is coming. Um, Jesus. But so they painted their house a di- or the roof of their house a different color. It was barely even really noticeable, you know, like just a slight, like different tint. But then because it was a different tint, that means that they infringed on the rights or not the rights on the rules of the HOA, which means that they were going to get a ticket that, and they had to appear before like the HOA and like plead their case and all that stuff. Or they were going to sue them for putting a roof on their house. That was a few shades lighter than everybody else's. I have two points. Like, First w- point, like why do I care about because you should have what... read the contract before you go and replace a $30,000 roof. Because roofs are not cheap. You need to read and make sure you research. And they did not do that. Because there are HOA stuff that you do sign. You have to read those terms. Second of all, I do see how that's a little too far. Like, seriously. And I think that comes with, it's ran by people. I mean, you're going to have, like, maybe you have a good relationship with your HOA and everybody's chill. And they're just like, yeah, just make sure, like... You know, you keep up your lawn and stuff because we don't want the place being run down and looking like a trailer park. Nothing wrong with trailer parks, but when they're managed nice and they look nice, people want to live there. But if they look like shit and you got junk everywhere, people don't want to live there. It looks like a bad neighborhood. This is just the delta between security and freedom. Like it's, we see it everywhere in our police systems, justice systems. I'm sorry, I, I think you meant Enyo and freedom. <laughs> Between Enyo and freedom. The more Enyo you get, maybe the less freedom, you know, and vice mm-hmm. versa. There's power imbalances in a lot of those things, but ultimately, like, we need those things. People will abuse them because they're people. But if we didn't have rules, we wouldn't be a society and shit would be ultimately a lot worse. Exactly. Yeah. It's a governing body, and you want, I mean, you, people, and we should absolutely are... work to, like, People are super anti-government, don't understand that, like, you need government because people abuse yeah. things. We should absolutely work to make things better and identify the imbalances and injustices in the current system, possibly overhaul it if absolutely necessary, but there shouldn't just not be a system. There shouldn't just not be an HOA. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you. I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's, it's like you're saying, though, it's just that I've seen and i've dealt with more of the extremes in those cases i think you just live with a bunch of karens honestly and that's sort of what i'm getting at i feel like hoas sort of breed that you know uh for the most part i think suburban neighborhoods breed karens that's that's a good point i my only experience with it is suburban yeah well what what places have hoas suburban uh 13 yeah excuse you and a half Call us when you like live a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, call me when you get a house and and not in an HOA because you're just like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that. And then uh, mm-hmm. you have some neighbor who does something horrific and drops your property value, and you're like, damn, I should have listened to them. I swear, them. if I buy a house and there's a hoarder with twenty cat with twenty cats 
that parks his renovated bus <laughs> while also putting a couch in down. front of mine. He hasn't renovated my... it yet. Okay, he's going oh, to get unre- to it. It's yeah, a project. Unrenovated, uh, it pr- unrenovated project vehicle it's in front of my house that also puts a couch at the foot of my lawn and smokes off of it. Then I'll say you guys are right. I'm going to move next to you and park my unrenovated van in front of your house and smoke in front of a couch. Uh, Whatever. Well, I think if I'm if I'm timing this correctly, that is all we have for today, correct? Yes, we're overdue, mm-hmm. but yes. Yeah. So that is all we have for today. Um, now it's time for me, the host, to pass down my crown, name the next episode's host. And quite honestly... It felt like a lot of arguing today. I'm not sure either of you necessarily proved that you should or shouldn't have it, but I will say that Enyo, we did use a spectrum, and at one end of it was Freedom, and the other end was Enyo, and the person who brought it together, who split the difference there, was Crow, and that is who the winner is of today's podcast. Robbed. I was robbed. How are you robbed? How Praise. dare you say my name Jesus first and then say Lord. it again? <laughs> it's because you opposed just, me. You tried to make sure you heard me. I think not only Jesus, but also God. Uh, I really think the opportunity is going to be good for me and my family. Um, Bring it back to God once again. I'm so grateful for being given this opportunity, and I'm going to play a good game out there. We're going to get the ball, put it on the team's goal, and... Uh, we go to McDonald's after that, so. Hey, you went hey, hard in the paint. You definitely deserve it, especially after that post-game interview. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for listening today. Uh, Crow, do you have anything that you would like to plug first as the current champion? Yes, I do. And this is um, some actually a cause, an issue, rather, very important to me. When I said castration... Okay, I meant removing... All right, Enyo, do you have anything you would like to plug today as a part of being in the loser's corner, but also the owner of the podcast? (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, Okay, well, um, I I feel a little cheated. I didn't even get a loser speech, uh, but... uh... No, go ahead. Say your piece, loser. Uh, you don't do me like that. Um, well, I feel like um, I had a lot of fun with this uh, this episode. Uh, I came in feeling zesty, feeling uh, some some arguments coming in, um, and I left angry. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna continue to be angry and. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know if. I don't know if you're gonna be host again. Whenever I'm gonna host. What a classic loser speech right there. We came in, we had fun, and then classic loser yet again. This leaving motherfucker angry. doesn't care about his housing, like the, the, about, about the appreciation of his assets, my man. And yo, by the next, by the, and yo, by the time of the next podcast, I'm quite certain you'll have forgotten all of this. Probably. Hence referencing the, the assets that we possess follow the podcast our main asset on youtube by subscribing to enyo hawk's youtube channel and as always as crow just mentioned this podcast has been forgettable